So, hello, my name is Matt, as I just said, and I'm the Raspberry Pi guy. And today I'm going to be talking to you about a topic that I like to call Raspberry Robotics. But before I get started, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about myself so you know who's talking to you. So, as I just said, my name is Matt, I'm 14, just started my GCSEs, and for the past year and a half almost now, I have run a Raspberry Pi YouTube channel called The Raspberry Pi Guy. Now, before I say any more, how many of you have heard of me before? Raise your hand if you have. Yes, now that, that's a good turnout. <laughs> I was expecting none of you. But anyway, that, that's great. So, um, I'm sure many of you will know that I provide uh, video tutorials on YouTube for all things Pi, everything from setting up an SD card to controlling motors with the GPIO pins. And uh, uh, I've, I did this because I, I found learning computing to be quite hard because uh, before the Pi was created, I was quite interested in consumer electronics and sort of gadgets and stuff, but I, did, I knew nothing about programming and electronics, any of the interesting stuff in computing. And so I got my hands on a Pi quite, uh, quite early on, and uh, it, was, it was my own journey of learning. And I found it quite hard because it was, it was hard back then when there, there wasn't too much support, now it's, it's a lot different now. Um, and so once I sort of had a base knowledge, I set up the Raspberry Pi guy. And uh, to date, I've had over a million views on oh, almost a million views. But if you're watching this um, after it's been recorded, then hopefully I've had over a million views um, on my videos. And I've now got around uh, 21,000 subscribers. So this is my channel. So as you can see, I have um, quite a varied range of videos. And um, so that's what I do. So running a YouTube channel has been very interesting because one, it's quite a lot of hard work. You like, underestimated um, how much time you need to run it. But I have, I've made time, and I do enjoy it. But one of the most interesting things I've found about having an educational YouTube channel is I've found it really interesting learning how people, and especially young people, learn. So in any lesson of any kind, whether it be a video tutorial or a workshop or a lesson, you have to make the subject matter interesting, but you also have to get across the key concepts that you want to teach. And I find that in computing, this is actually really hard. For example, I can't tell you how many programming, um, programming tutorials that I've read that um, have ended in me being able to program finance applications. Now, whilst they, finance applications teach you some good programming habits, they're a bit boring. And especially for a young child, they have no interest in working out how much about tax and all of that kind of thing. It's completely boring. And it's really not, not a good start to the incredibly exciting and fun world of computing. So this leaves you with a dilemma. What do you do that teaches people good computing concepts, but fun and interesting for people, and especially young children. So what, what teaches people about programming? What teaches people about electronics? And the answer to that, I think, is robots. <laughs> so I meant to say that bit in an evil voice, but um, alas. So I'm sure when I say robot, pictures like this will appear in your head of Terminator and HAL 9000 and Daleks, etc. But uh, these are great fictional robots, but they're not the ones that I'm on about. So the ones I'm on about are two-wheeled chaps like these, with a Raspberry Pi at the heart. So one of the first robots that I ever made um, looked like this, and he was called Dave. But Dave the robot isn't with us anymore because I believe that he was harvested for parts. But uh, back to the point. So in my experience, robots are the best way to learn about computers. Now, I'm hopefully over the uh, course of this presentation, I'm going to explain why. But um, First, let's just recap the problem. So, we want something that's fun, interesting, educational, and that teaches people about computing. And the answer, no points for this, because I just told you, is robots. So, let's take a closer look at this picture. So, despite many people's preconceptions, robotics is actually pretty easy. So, simply, a robot like this is fully functional. All you need is a chassis, some motors, a Pi, and a motor controller board, like a Ryan's. Uh, yeah. Give us a wave, Ryan. There we go. He's the guy to talk to if you want a motor controller board. Um, 
And all you've got to do is wire them up just with a few simple wires. I've got tutorials for that. And a few couple of lines of code, and off you are with a robot that trundles around the floor. And as soon as you've got kind of like a fundamental basis, you can then add to it very cheaply. So let's take a look at a parts list. So for a basic robot, all you need is a Raspberry Pi, chassis, a motor, and a motor controller board. But as soon as you've got that, you can make a robot move around the floor. But then you can add very cheaply sensors. So sensors are available, as I said, very cheaply, less than, less than five pounds. So it's kind of pocket money type stuff, and that's perfect for a school or um, if you're trying to teach with limited funds. And these can allow your robot to become a little bit more intelligent. And all the, all the while, you're learning more electronics, more computing, more programming. So you could add something like a distance sensor to stop your robot from crashing. Or a little bit uh, more advanced, you could add the Raspberry Pi camera and then get a live feed from your robot. And so as you can see, the robots, there are lots of things that you can do with them. So that's, it's not something that you do and then there's no way to expand on that. But what computing concepts do they actually teach? So I've been going on about computing concepts. So I think that there are um, six areas that robots teach people about, and they are electronics, engineering, design, loops, logical steps, and debugging. And so when you wire up your robot, you learn a lot about electronics and about how, how things like motors work, how the GPIO pins on the Pi work. So that in itself is very educational, and you haven't even got it to move yet. You also learn about things like engineering and design, which aren't completely to do with computing, but are very useful and also some great cross-curricular stuff. And then when you actually get to programming your robot and actually making it move, you learn loads about loops, logical steps, and debugging. So a loop is, when you see a computer use a loop, like a while loop, um, if you know what that is, you'll see a computer does it very fast. And it can be quite hard to follow, especially when you're just starting. But if you see a robot continually going around in a circle forever, and it's a very good physical representation of your code. And um, especially when I was starting, it helped me get my head around this kind of stuff. And um, as I said, I was a complete be beginner at the start. You also learn about logical steps. So for example, as I said, a computer goes through uh, code very fast, and so it can be quite hard to see what it does. But with a robot, you can see it happening in real time. So you can see that it goes forward for some time, turns left, turns right. And you can learn how a computer goes through a program step by step. And what better way to learn about debugging than to see your robot fail at something? So as you can see, they're great physical representations. So, and as soon as you've got that kind of base knowledge, you can apply it to other things in the computing topic, so some more software stuff, like uh, Minecraft and things like that. And as soon as you've got a, a simple robot, like the one we just saw, like Dave, your students or people that you're teaching will, want, will be inspired and they'll want to learn a bit more about robotics, which is an incredibly interesting topic on its own. And then you'll have them wanting to build uh, humanoid robots and quadcopters and all sorts. So, um, as you can see, I hope that you've, uh, that you've now got an idea that ro robotics is a great introduction into the world of computers and computing, and that it teaches, teaches people, especially young people, uh, programming concepts and electronics in a very easy and simple to follow manner. So, I think that's it for the presentation now. So, um, I was just wondering if anyone had any questions or whether Alan wants we'll, to... We'll, we'll take one question, yeah. just because you put your hand up. How much would it cost, you know, to oh, put yeah. together one of those robots? Oh, yeah. I forgot that part of the presentation. <laughs> um, so, so, uh, so a fundamental robot that's it's just a Pi, um, chassis, motors, and motor controller, um, including the Pi, you could get that for under £60. So it's, it's not too expensive in terms of things. And then you can actually build it yourself rather than something like Lego um, Mindstorms or something like that. Yeah, yeah, Lego Mindstorms will set a school back more than £200. 
And so, but with a Pi, you learn far more and you don't have to worry about stuff like that. And then, as I said, sensors and cameras can be added very cheaply as well. Do you think you did all right? Yeah. <laughs>